This is Saturn in Universe Sandbox. You can see it does have rings. Saturn has the biggest rings of any planet in our solar system, but it is nowhere near how big rings can get. That title goes to J1407b, also known as Super Saturn or the Lord of the Rings. Today we're going to give Saturn J1407b's rings, and we're also going to do a bunch of suggestions that you guys gave me in the comments and on my Discord server. If you'd like to leave a suggestion for the next video, just make sure you use the word suggestion in your comment. So let's start with Saturn. 120 million kilometers wide. That's how big the rings go out. Okay, so we're gonna add that to Saturn now. So we're gonna go add, go to rings, and then adjust our ring settings and set our outer radius. We're gonna do number of particles. We'll go max because the rings will be so big. Outer radius, 120 million, 000000K. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, okay. And if we click add ring, Okay, so the game started lagging. You can't see it super well when you're zoomed in, but you can start to see them. But once you zoom out, you'll be able to see it a lot more. That is how big J1407B rings would be on Saturn. That's insane. For scale, like look, the, here's the difference between Jupiter and Saturn. Like that's not that much further out. That is so crazy. Let's see if we go to Earth, how far, like, okay, I'm gonna go to Earth and then look at Saturn from Earth. Look at that. So if you land on Earth, so this isn't super realistic, but if we land on Earth and then look up into our night sky, that's Saturn. That's what it would look like. You would totally be able to see the rings with your naked eye from Earth super easily. That would be crazy. Oh, the game is so laggy. Okay, I'm gonna go clear all of the particles at once and just look at the frame difference. Okay, so I'm gonna run the simulation as fast as it'll let me. It only lets me do it about one day per second. So look at the frame rate, it's like super low. And then we do control D to clear it all. And whoa, okay, frame rate is back. Okay, that is Saturn with J1407B rings. Okay, our next suggestion comes from my Discord server. It says make the earth unhabitable and the moon habitable. So we're gonna unterraform earth and terraform the moon. Okay, so here's earth. Oh, we're going, we're going very fast. Here's earth and then the moon right here. So let's start by unterraforming the earth. So I think we should try to make the earth like the moon. So what we're gonna do, um, first, the moon has no atmosphere, so let's start by removing Earth's atmosphere. Atmosphere mass, zero. Okay, already that's gonna kill pretty much all the life on Earth. The moon also has no water, so let's start by draining the oceans and then even get rid of all the ice too. Look at that, okay, that looks a lot sadder. The moon has a bunch of little craters, so let's throw a few asteroids at it to try to get some craters on here. Get some craters on here. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, we're gonna need a lot of these. This is really gonna make the <laughs> the Earth look like the moon, I think. Gotta do all around the Earth. So now there's no atmosphere to stop these from coming. Okay, that's probably good with the asteroids. Also, the moon is more gray. This is more brown, so we can actually go to the visuals and change the color. Make it more gray. Check that out. Okay, that's looking a lot like the moon, actually. Let's check our life likelihood. 0%, I'd consider that a success. A successful unterraforming of Earth. Now we gotta terraform the moon and the moon will still stay in orbit around the Earth. So in Universe Sandbox, to get water to stay on small objects, you have to add a little bit of hydrogen. Just like that will work. Otherwise the water will just like fly out into space. So we're gonna start by adding some water to the moon. It'll fill in a lot of these craters. That actually looks cool. Little more, probably like that. And then we need to add an atmosphere because the Earth has an atmosphere. We'll do a pretty thick one, um, but then we can adjust like its visibility in here. Something like that. Let's add some clouds. Earth has a lot of clouds. And then we need vegetation. Yes, check that out. And city lights. So on the back, yes, you can see there's city lights now on the moon. And what is our life likelihood on the moon now? 31.4. I think I can make it a little bit better if I make the moon not tidally locked to Earth. So. Instead of it locked to Earth, it will r rotate freely. So rotational period, one day. And that should help a little bit with that. Yeah, 61.3%. Let's check our temperature. Negative three Celsius, we'll change that to about 14 Celsius or 57 Fahrenheit's the average temperature. That's pretty good. And now we're at 62.9. Um, how can we make this a little more like Earth? I'm gonna add ice caps like the Earth had. Doesn't have any more ice on the top and the bottom so now it has basically its own version of the north pole and antarctica check that out that's a beautiful planet fairly good especially for a small moon like this and then our unterraformed earth 
Very, very sad. Okay, our next suggestion says replace Jupiter with the biggest planet in the universe, HD 100546b, and see what happens to the solar system. So we still have our solar system here. So we're gonna replace Jupiter with the biggest planet we've ever discovered which is called HD 100546B. And I'm pretty sure Universe Sandbox has this built in. So if we just click replace object and then search HD 100546B, here it is. So we click replace and okay. So it is super hot because it's almost on the point of becoming a star. Um, but let's see if this affects the solar system in any way. Cause the mass is about 17 times more than Jupiter was. So we'll see if anything changes. Not really. I think it might've pulled some of these asteroids um, further out than they were. Um, oh, it looks like Saturn's orbit is being pulled in actually. You can see it's trail. So we're running at 85 years a second. Okay, it's been about a thousand years and it doesn't look like much has happened. So I'm actually gonna change its mass and make it 10 times bigger than it is now. That might turn into a star. Yeah, small star. Let's see if anything happens now. Oh yeah, look, Saturn and Neptune, their orbits are completely broken now. Uranus has been launched out of the entire solar system, but I think the inner planets are okay. Oh no, Mars, look at Mars. And the moon is no longer on Earth, our terraformed moon, but I think it's okay because it's still next to the sun. But that is what would happen if we had a planet 10 times bigger than the biggest planet in our solar system. Okay, our next suggestion says shoot a whole ocean the size of Neptune at the sun. So we're gonna go, we got a new solar system here. We're gonna go to the sun and we're gonna grab Neptune, launch it at the sun, but we're gonna make Neptune 100% water. It already looks like water cause it's so blue. We're gonna go to composition. It's already 75% water, but we're gonna make that 100%. So it still looks the same, but now it is 100% water. And watch Neptune, a water Neptune go into the sun. Here it comes. Let's see if anything actually happens. Okay, collision, you can see kind of a ripple here. It's hard to see, it's so bright. And we're gonna speed up time and see if anything happens to the sun at all. No, the sun is invincible to mere Neptune impact. So let's do Neptune 10 times as big full of water. Is 10 times big too big or let's see. Radius 10 times. Okay, yeah, that's gotta do something. We're gonna make this full of water now. Okay, this is a Neptune full of water, but it is 10 times as big. Okay, this has got to do something to the sun. Let's see it. Oh, okay, so it made the sun blue and grow a little bit, and it's starting to spin. So I think it just added mass to the sun. I don't think it's gonna like put out the sun. Also, it made the sun start moving, but because of the way the solar system works, all of the planets follow it going down now. You can actually see that, that's kind of cool. So the sun's moving down, but all the planets follow. But that actually looks really cool. Oh, here we go. Make J1407B's ring five times wider. Okay, so let's get a new solar system. So I'm just gonna give Saturn J1407B rings, but they're five times as big as the J1407B rings. So let's start by adding a ring, adjust it. So J1407B rings are 120 million kilometers. So what's 120 million times five? That's, a, that's 600 million kilometers. So outer radius, we're gonna set this to 600, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. So that's 600 million kilometers out. That's gonna be a lot. Let's see how big that is. Okay, I added it, oh, I added it to Jupiter. That's okay, we'll do it on Jupiter. Whoa, okay, so it reaches all the way from Jupiter almost to Earth. It's in the orbit of Mars. That's wild, that's crazy. So you can see how much of the solar system that really takes up. That takes about the same size as the center of the solar system all the way to Jupiter's orbit. That's crazy. Okay, let's see if my computer can even run all these particles. It's a little laggy, but it's running it okay. I mean, at this speed, it can only run it at three days every second. That is J1407B's rings, but they're five times bigger. That's how big they would be. That's crazy. Okay, our next suggestion says put the moon in the Roche limit. So if you don't know what the Roche limit is, it is the point where an object is so close to another object that the gravity rips it apart. So if we move the moon close enough to Earth, the Earth will actually rip the moon into chunks because the gravity forces are so strong. So we're gonna take the moon and we're gonna put it right next to Earth. So this should cause the moon to be ripped apart by the Earth. So let's move it there, but we don't want it to just crash into it. So we're just still gonna have it orbit, auto orbit. Yeah, so the moon's still in orbit, but it should get ripped apart this close. Let's see, we're gonna play time. It might need to be a little bit closer. Yeah, okay, it looks like we need to be closer. Move it like this, and then it should get really close on that other side. Yeah, see that? 
see how the the moon's getting ripped apart so this is actually how a lot of rings are formed if an object gets too close to its um gravity parent it can get ripped apart and then these rocks will become rings over time but universe sandbox sadly doesn't simulate that super well yet so a lot of these will just dissolve basically but you can see how rings could be made from that um, so it looks like the moon is now small enough that the Earth's not pulling it apart anymore. So then we just want it to crash into it, right? Yes, scrape on the Earth. Oh, it's like touching, but it's not doing anything. Oh, there we go. It's like leaving a trail now. Let's see what happens. Uh, and it gets absorbed into the Earth. That's pretty cool. Make the Earth the center of our solar system. Okay, so let's just replace the sun with Earth. Replace object and we will go Earth. What do you think will happen? Let's find out. I already know what's gonna happen. All the planets are gonna lose their orbits because Earth is not massive enough to hold anything. Yeah, see that? Every single planet just leaves the solar system. That's what happens if you replace, if you put Earth at the center of the solar system, that's what would happen. Also, this Earth freezes because there's no sun to warm it. Okay, and our last suggestion for today is to put a sun mass black hole in the solar system at the Earth's position and see how it affects the solar system. Okay, so basically we're gonna replace Earth with a black hole that has the same mass as the sun. So we're gonna replace this with, do I already have one saved? Black hole one solar mass right here. So if we replace this, you can see how small it is. The radius is only three kilometers big. That's how dense black holes are. Okay, so let's see what happens now to the solar system if we add a solar mass black hole right there. Oh, Mercury and the sun get pulled around and it's pulling the sun. It's pulling everything really. So Mars is in a really elliptical tight orbit. So the thing is, it's so small that things aren't running into it. They're just getting really close and like going around it. So let's see what happens. So it looks like the black hole and the sun are now binary with each other. It's ejecting some objects out, pulling every single planet towards it. Because this is now the, the sun and the black hole are, now they're, it's like having two suns next to each other. So it's going to pull everything twice as hard as the sun normally would. Almost nothing stays in orbit around it. Everything just leaves. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Once again, if you want to leave a suggestion, make sure you use the word suggestion. Because when I search for them, I type suggestion in my search thing. Thank you so much for watching. Join the Discord server if you haven't. Links in the description. I'll see you guys next time.